Thank you, Morgan, and thank you very much for inviting me today. What I want to do in this uh, very short presentation is tell you a little bit about my journey into trading. I've been doing this for over 20 odd years, and uh, I say with a wry smile, have uh, survived. And I want to take you through my journey and show you exactly what has been um, uh, the result of this journey because it's been fascinating. As always, there is a disclaimer. This is for education purposes only. If you're unhappy with this, please leave the room now, but it is only for education. The agenda that we're going to go through, and there will be, as always, an offer at the end of this presentation, is that I'm going to give you a brief introduction to volume. I'm going to give you application of volume in the market, and I'm going to give you closing thoughts. On application of volume, I'm going to go to my TradeStation platform and go through numerous charts and anything that you might ask for as well. So if you want any stocks to be analyzed or any uh, Forex pairs or commodities, I will be showing those. And I want to show you the power of volume on those and how volume can really help you. And then there'll be closing thoughts, question and answers. So a very brief in introduction to volume. You know, traditional trading has a huge uh, failure rate. 70 to 80% of traders are failing. And we hear that. And there are various reasons why. One of the reasons why is that they're using traditional trading strategies, MACD, stochastic, Bollinger Bands, Elliott Wave, uh, et cetera, et cetera, moving average crossovers, whatever they might be. They're all lagged indicators. The other thing that I'd like to say is that most traders use the wrong time frames. Um, it's crazy that when you are learning to trade, you are trying to, to trade off fast time frames. Um, because fast time frames become random. The faster the time frame, the more random. And if you think of what you're doing, you're taking random price data, smoothing it by putting it into price, and then you're smoothing it with extra filters of whatever uh, uh, trading indicators you then put on top of it. As I said, MACD, stochastics, etc. All these strategies do not work. I mean, I've been around a long time. I've seen a couple of thousand traders uh, around the world. And I just know that they're all pulling their hair out because they're all fine in hindsight, live edge of the market, they don't uh, pull it. And this is why volume is so important. It is the only leading indicator out there. It signals price movement before it happens. It signals market intent. All other indicators are lagging. You know, markets have to go through logical sequences. They have to go through price accumulation. So accumulation comes in when the stock or the commodity or the currency pair becomes fair value or undervalued. Accumulation comes in, price move happens, then it goes up, then it becomes overbought in, in that term, distribution takes place, and it returns back down to what the market perceives as fair value, which is normally higher in an up market than the previous area of consolidation and accumulation. And that's why we really have to know why volume is important and all other indicators are lagging. And the real trick of volume is to use it on triple time frame. So let's say, for example, you are trading a five minute, you trade a five minute, a 10 minute, and a 20 minute in harmony, the volumes across all three time frames. If you were trading daily, daily, weekly, monthly, 30 minutes, 60 minutes, 120 minutes, and so on. And it really, really was the aha moment for me when I put it onto triple time frames. Let me just go back a little bit and tell you how I became a trader. I didn't start off in trading. I left school and went and worked for the Times and Sunday Times in London. And then I started my own publishing business, which I sold out. Um, went off to Australia, was uh, one of the directors for the America's Cup team out there when uh, it, it, it was raced in Perth in Australia. Uh, whilst I was away, I gave a stockbroker six figures to uh, invest. And over lunch, when I got back, he told me he'd lost it all. I thought he'd ripped me off, and I went through all the cover notes, and I thought, this is easy. And having had a business with 300-odd people working there, I thought, 
this is fantastic. I don't need to employ anybody. I can do this myself. And I started, and it was in the days uh, before computers. I know I don't look that old, but I have been around. And the market, all I had, I was trading the gold market. I had a long trestle table out uh, with graph paper on, and um, I used, just used to trade gold, and I was horrible. I even reached the stage that if my trading was telling me to buy something, I'd sell it because I was wrong far more than I was right. So what did I do? I was just so bad that I thought, I've got to go and see where the professionals are trading. Because one of the hardest things in trading is that you have to be a loser first. And being a loser, learning how to trade has a very, very bad effect on you. It wires your brain up for fear. And again, one of the hardest things and one of the reasons that most people come to Hawkeye and most people come to our seminars is because getting over the hump of being a loser to becoming a profitable trader is very difficult. And most traders cannot hold into a trend run. They come out far too early because they can't believe their luck. They just come out. They don't have trading plans. They don't have profit targets, et cetera, et cetera. So what I did, I thought, I've got to go and see where the professionals are trading. So I went to the London Stock Exchange. And in those days, it was before Bin Laden. And you could just uh, walk in and watch the boys in the pits trading. So I went every day for two weeks. And I took it as a job. I went there first thing in the morning. In those days, it even closed closed at lunchtime. I went out to the pubs uh, at lunchtime with the uh, traders and in the evening to see what they had. I really got to know the floor traders. All of them are young guys. All of them probably are not fabulously educated, but they all have a great sense of testosterone and aggression. Um, and you've seen that. You've seen the pictures where they're pushing on the pit floor and spitting at each other. You know, they're up there. It's a war. It's a war. It's a battle game for them. But I knew by watching that I'd found the missing link. And that missing link was their advantage. Let's think of what a pit trader has as an advantage. They have accountability. In other words, they have a job to go to. Most of us are home traders. We've turned the spare bedroom into a trading room. And we sit there all day, and we're accountable to no one except probably our family and our wives, etc. And we probably, in all honesty, lie to them sometimes and say, yeah, I've had a great day when we've just sat there and been mesmerized like rabbits in the spotlight. So, But the pit trader has accountability. At the end of the day, his boss wants to know what he's done and how much he's made. So accountability really turns into consistency. He has that consistency. He also has free money, the spread, the bid and the offer. Well, we can't uh, duplicate that at home. But a lot of the uh, pit traders are just, if you like, arbitraging. But more importantly, they could feel the market. They could feel the buying orders coming in. They could see the big boys coming in, the Goldman Sachs putting orders in. They could feel the selling orders going out. They could feel the hype going on in the market. And that is volume. And that is when I knew that volume is the key. And I started my journey. Richard Wyckoff is probably the father of volume. And I started off studying his work. He was around in the 1930s. I find it fascinating that in, in the 1930s, three great traders came out of that time period that we, we still follow today, the W.D. Gann boys, the uh, Elliott Waves, and uh, the Wyckoffs. And Wyckoff studied volume and price. So what did I do? I got on a plane. I went to Phoenix in America and met with the Wyckoffs family. They had a small little printing business in a corner of a, uh, uh, of, of a uh, small little shopping arcade, Mull. And uh, I managed to photo have them photocopy his original course notes. Took them back to England and started to go through them. And I suddenly realized that he was missing something. And what he was missing was the opening price. You know, in volume spread analysis, VSA, the volume spread analysis doesn't consider the open. Hawkeye considers it as paramount because it's very similar to an auction. But let me just backtrack. And I don't think Wyckoff considered the open. 
because there wasn't electronic data at that time. Data took a long time. It was in New York, it went to Chicago, it went to St. Louis, it went to, to Kansas City, it went off to uh, uh, um, San Francisco, Los Angeles, across the Pacific, Tokyo, et cetera, et cetera, around to London. The open wasn't considered. They wanted to see what the high and the low and the close was in a 24-hour period. But now everybody sees everything immediately. And that's why you are now being taught, a lot of the traders, not to buy the breakout, but to buy the pullback because everybody jumps in when a moving average is broken or a crossover is broken or whatever you're looking at, a MACD or a Bollinger Band, everybody jumps in. There is no attendant volume. The price goes up, no attendant volume to push it. Remember, volume is the fuel in the car. It hasn't pushed the price up. The price has been pushed up because everybody's seen technical uh, uh, indicators being broken. No volume, it falls back. So it's very similar to an auction. You know, if the auctioneer starts out with something at $100 and he says, bid me 90, bid me 80, bid me 70, 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, somebody puts their hand up at 20, it's probably only likely to go up to 150, 160 again, um, uh, sorry, 50, 60, uh, and then be closed out. However, if the auctioneer started at 100 and it goes down to 80 and it's immediately a bid comes in, you're pretty certain that that price is going to go up to 150, 160, etc. And that's why I like to see exactly what the opening price is going to be, because it sets the bias for the session. You know, the Hawkeye algorithm, which I'm extremely proud of and I hope will become my legacy to traders, to, uh, traders contains over 300 calculations a bar, and basically what we're looking at is over 20 bars, we break it up into uh, groups of five, and uh, we weight each group of five. But what we look at is the open to the close, the standard deviation between the open and the closes, standard deviation between the open and the high and the low, standard deviation between the close, the high and the low, and the standard deviation between the high and the low. It works all that out, weights it, and takes it forward but when we get to the last five bars, each bar is weighted individually. So it's highly complex. It does 300 odd calculations per bar. So let me now show you application of volume. And I'd like you, Randy, to come in on this because I can't see any of the questions coming in. Um, I want to take you through some charts and I want to show you the power of volume. Randy, can you confirm that you can speak and come in um, because I'd like people to now type in stocks or uh, symbols that they would like, FX symbols they'd like me to uh, look at. But what I want to show until I get, uh, or Morgan, can you come in and tell me any questions that come in, um, prices? Sure, I the, can't uh, hear anybody, so. The Euro Yen yep. and then COP okay. and then the Euro currency. Okay, COP, let me do Euro Yen. And what was the other one? COP, Euro, Yen. COP, okay. um, Tesla. I'll, I'll, I'll ask one by one. That's the easiest, Morgan. Thank you. So let me just show you how the volume works. And I'll just go through these uh, randomly. But um, for example, when I get down to uh, 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 coffee and cotton and, uh, and, uh, uh, and sugar, I doubt if there are many traders of that in the room. But I trade a lot of coffee. Um, unbelievable. But let's just look at here. Here's the crude market coming down. So these are all my Hawkeye indicators. I won't take you through all of them, but this is the Hawkeye volume and this is the Hawkeye volume off the weekly. So this is the weekly over here. What we can do, our volume algorithm is available in TradeStation, Ninja and Multicharts and eSignal soon and um, uh, uh, MT4 rather and Multicharts soon. So let me just recap. TradeStation, Ninja, MT4, eSignal within a couple of weeks and multi-charts uh, by the end of March, hopefully. So you can see here, this is the Hawkeye volume indicator. So green shows professional buying, red shows selling, and white shows no demand. We can see here, this is the Hawkeye trend goes red, so telling us that there is a downtrend. 
But in this downtrend, as it's coming in, you can see that right at the bottom here, we have volume accumulation going on. There is the volume, the green volume coming in, the accumulation of the volume coming in to push this market up. And sure enough, it gets pushed up. You get the little pullback test on, on some selling volume. It doesn't do anything to the price, and then it goes off again. And that is confirmed over on the weekly chart. You can see that over here we have green volume, no, uh, uh, no demand, no demand, green volume, green volume, um, all coming in at the bottom of this downtrend, showing us that it's being accumulated. And even when we get over to the monthly, you can see that we've got white volume here, a little bit of red volume that came in on the previous month, at the end of this month, that will go green as well. <coughs> Excuse me. So you can see that accumulation. And with everything that's happening with the uh, awful weather in America, look at what's happened also on natural gas. I mean, a huge rally up. But look at the accumulation on the weekly chart that came in, that pushed it up. Look what came in on the daily chart to push it, push it in. And if I can really make you salivate, let me just show you coffee. There was the accumulation that all came in. Um, there was bad weather reports down in Brazil pushing this market up. And here is again the power of the Hawkeye volume. There it is telling you that it's being sold, it's being tested. But the trend indicator on Hawkeye says, hold on, that is just a pullback. That's just a pause in this uptrend. And bang, it comes in again. There's the buying volume coming in three, three bars before. Then we paint this big scion dot saying, come on, boys, we're off to the races, get in. That is a huge amount of money, let me just tell you. And when we get down to currencies, um, stocks, let me just go through some stocks, first of all. One of the ones, I don't know if any of you get my newsletters, and if, if you want to, uh, we do a weekly newsletter on volume and, and uh, stocks of the week and uh, commodities and Forex. Some of you will say there's no volume on Forex. There is volume on Forex because we run tick data in. So we take tick data into price, and that gives us our volume algorithm. It's about, I think, about uh, 87 to 90% as accurate as real volume because it's showing market ac activity. Um, Facebook, there was a little pullback, which was not confirmed in the weekly um, trend at all. It was just a close out of that trend. And then we got the large scion dot here with the accumulating volume coming in, boom, and up it went. And this has gone up $9 since uh, I called it a uh, week before last on, on the newsletter. And if we go to something like Apple, which has had a, a difficult time, here you can see when it was before it reported its uh, bad results on its hands, hand uh, uh, on its phones, you can see that the volume was being distributed here. Don't ever tell me that people aren't in the know on volume. The professionals do have inside information. I don't know how it leaks out, but they know. And you can see that it's being sold into. And here is the weekly volume showing you all the way at the top here was being sold. And now we have the accumulation phase coming in on the daily, but only nothing on the weekly, just white volume showing us no demand. It's just showing us that there's no side bullish or bearish on the volume. It's neutral volume. And we're waiting for that to uh, come up. Now, somebody asked me for a stock. Oh, before I do that, let me just show you gold, which is quite interesting, because everybody likes to hear about that one for some reason. Again, here was the accumulation all coming in down the bottom on gold around the uh, 1250 price and it's gone up to 1322 there's the test on the volume again the hawkeye trend did not show that it was going to go down it was a trend pause whilst volume accumulation was going on and there was the volume coming in pushing it back up now let me go back down and show you stocks that you're asking for and i can show you stocks intraday cop Let's have a look at that. Hasn't been around long, this stock, obviously. Well, you can see 
a beautiful downtrend here, which was confirmed up with, with the weekly, with the weekly volume. That big scion dot is telling us on the weekly to get short. The scion dot here, uh, the um, magenta dot rather, I beg your pardon. The two magenta dots, the magenta dot here is telling you it's a cell. Magenta dot here telling you another cell after this congestion area here. And the volume is, is showing you down all the way. But look what's happening now. We're getting weekly accumulation of volume coming in. We're getting daily accumulation of volume coming in. So we've got stopping volume. We've got a pivot low, which is the little yellow dot here. A pivot high, the yellow dot here. The market's gone into congestion. One thing I teach and uh, the offer that I'm going to give you at the end of this presentation will take you through this. A market can only move in six ways which is trend run, trend pause, congestion entrance, congestion, congestion exit, trend reversal. You have to learn that. You have to learn that to be a successful trader because it tells you where you are and it gives you a language all the time to know exactly where you are. So we're in congestion, accumulation of volume. We're expecting a price breakout to the upside. Morgan, any other stocks people would like me to look at? Um, Amazon. Pendian. Yeah, stocks. I just want to do stocks at the moment. Any stock symbols? Uh, the GLD or GSK? Well, that's gold. The gold, G GSK. GLD is gold, yes. Uh, GSK is another one. They asked. Yeah. Smith, Smith Klein. Can you make your um, chart larger? Uh, I can't. It's full screen for me, Randy. Um, just that one. Just that one window. Is that, is that better? Yeah. Or oh, I tell you, you what I can do. I can just, yeah. Yeah, I can just there do that. Go. Is that better? Okay. Mm -hmm. So w we know what the bias is. We always have to go off. Remember when I was doing the presentation, triple time frame. Monthly, monthly uptrend. It's been going long on Hawkeye since uh, August 2011. Weekly is an uptrend. So no shorts would you take on, on this stock. You're only interested in, in the longs. And here you can see, again, it's come down here. And you can see the accumulation of volume coming in down the bottom as it pushes itself back up here. And there is the push up, up to the upside. Any other stock symbols, Randy? Yeah, tons of them. Uh... Netflix, NFLX. Sorry, what's the symbol? N NFLX. Okay, been long since July uh, 13th on the monthly. So you would have uh, got a buy signal in on this at uh, 170 bucks. It's 434 now. I think you'd be writing me a thank you letter and offering to take me out to dinner. So that was the buy on the monthly. If you could have held it in your retirement fund, great. And the weekly has been in harmony with that all the time. No shorts would you have taken. If you had taken a short, you'd be looking for a very, very short trend run like this one here. And again, there's the accumulating volume coming in on this downtrend. Some selling came in, down it came. There was the stopping vo volume that came in there sent it sideways, there was the weekly volume coming back in, pushed up, the scion dot comes in telling you, buy it, get long, there is the signal. Next one, Randy. SWN. SWN. Mm -hmm. Okay, again, six ways a market moves. We are in congestion on our monthly, but we came out of congestion last month. So January took us out of congestion. If you look at the Hawkeye, you can see a green dot on the trend has brought us out. But look at all this accumulating volume down here. So although it was in congestion, showing us that there was no price movement, you had from July 13 to now of accumulating volume going through this market. Interesting. And that caused this breakout here. So there was the breakout, there was the accumulating volume in the downtrend here, pushing it back out, sending it up. But wow, what a great trade that was off, off the monthly, off the weekly, which again was showing accumulating volume. Next one, Randy. 
Tesla, T-S-L-A. T-S-L-A. Weekly, uh, monthly, you can see that it uh, hasn't been around that long. Um, well, it's been around since 11. Monthly uptrend, weekly uptrend. It didn't, it, that would not have been elected. That, that little short in there when it went like that was a close of this trend run. Then we painted a scion in here telling us to get long again on here. There's the accumulating volume coming through. There's the accumulating volume on the weekly coming through. So I'll move off, I'll do one more stock, Randy, and then I'll move off and get on to currencies. One more stock. The GDX, gold bugs, gold miners. Uh, I've done gold. I've done gold. Okay. I've done um, gold. How about LCI? LCI. L okay. Okay. Well, it's the same story. Look at the volume accumulation here on the on the on the monthly since uh, uh, August of 13. There it is on the weekly. And again, if you guys are holding this for your retirements, look at that. That came in there as well on the weekly. So the weekly, monthly have held you long since uh, 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 February the first. Oh no, you do it the other way around. Um, yeah, the first, all the way through here. And again, you would not be selling this at all on any of these little dips. They give you, if you want to, reasons to come out of daily trends to get back into the daily trend. You know, trading's all about risk. It's all about finding the risk angle. And the risk angle is that you need to find markets that are reversing their fastest time frame, which in this instance is their daily, reversing back into their two slowest time frames, weekly, monthly. So every time that happens, you've got a low risk entry. And there it is coming in here. There's the low risk entry. The next question is, where do you get out? Now, most people are just showing entries. They're not showing exits. The last guy showed exits, which were target points. But here you can see that you can say, OK, what am I going to do? I can trend run it. If you're doing weekly and monthly trading, which very few people can hold on to these, you trend run until you get stopped out. If you're day trading or, or daily trading, we have something called the Hawkeye ATR levels, which is average true range. And we put those on, and we have specific areas that we're looking for. So we are looking to take off if we are just fast trading this or swing trading this for a few days. We're looking to take 50% of our position off at two ATRs as it comes up, and the remaining 50% off at four ATRs. That's if we're profit target trading. If you want to go and say, I want to do this further, you can go back and you can take the ATRs and you can run them up. And we teach you in class how to use these ATRs to actually run and hold a position all the way through. And finally, if I can just step those off for a moment, we have the ads, which you won't be able to see on this. But if I put them on, Randy, can can anybody see that? You can see the one, three, two, one. Not really. I mean, that you can see they're there. You just can't see them. Okay. One of the things I learned when I was trading um, was that I thought I'd better go and learn how to be a gambler. So I took myself off to Vegas and went card, card counting. And whilst I was doing that, well, when I finished, I went into the casino and this big Texas guy at the table, he said, boy, he says, you're good at this. He said, you've got no clue how to hit the deck when it's in your favor. So he taught me how to uh, really hit the card deck when it was in your favor. And I took that into the trading algorithm. Remember, this is my own trading program, which has morphed to be a, uh, a, a public product, which I enjoy immensely because trading is a lonely business. And I enjoy the interaction of uh, meeting all the Hawkeye users around the world now. So you can see you start off with one, let's say, uh, 10 shares. It, then three comes up here. It's telling you buy another 30 shares. It's telling you to buy another 20 shares. It's now telling you to buy another 10 shares. So you're leveraged in to 70 shares in this 
move. So you can trend, trend run it using Hawkeye and the Profit Accelerator. You can have profit targets on the ATRs, or you can trend run it on the ATRs, and we teach all of those. And every Thursday, every Wednesday, we have a uh, free room for you to come in, and we trade the live markets live in front of you. And if you join Hawkeye and become a Hawkeye member, you have free access on Thursdays to the trading rooms where Randy, uh, who's, a, who's the CEO of Hawkeye, very competent trader, runs the um, e-mini, crude, and other uh, stocks or setups that are coming in, and I do an hour and a quarter on Forex beforehand. So let me just go over and show um, now the um, intraday um, on 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 um, Forex. What was the uh, what was the uh, pair that people wanted to see, Randy? Mainly, probably the uh, uh, the pound yen. Uh, Euro yen or the pound yen, I think, were the two most popular ones. And of course, they're all they're all asking for the e mini futures as well, too. So, all right, I'll show you. I'll show that. Um, I'm showing you this on uh, on TradeStation, and TradeStation, of course, you can select whatever time frame you wish. Um, the MT4 people don't have that, although we have come up, one of our Hawkeye users has come up with a way that we can uh, play with it and uh, change our time frames to what we want. But um, if, if you look at this, I'm on a 15 minute, and when a buy comes up here, which it has, it has to be elected across the board. And when I say across the board, I have to look at my middle time frame, my 30, which has gone green. Um, but I only have one bar of green volume, and I need over here on my 60 minutes, I need to see green volume, and I have one bar of green volume there. Um, I need to see two on the 30 minutes, but it's not elected. So this was not elected. Um, the other thing that we have is this indicator here that looks like a bunch of spaghetti, and I don't want to get too involved with it because this is a volume presentation, but each color represents an indicator, a uh, 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 currency, and what I have done, I've run the Hawkeye trend into this, and it shows you what every currency is doing against the rest of the world. So what I've done, I've taken all, all the currencies, divided them into each other, weighted them, so, and I call it the Hawkeye fat man, and what I'm looking for, it shows me direction. So at this point of time here, the British pound was going up, which was the brown line, and the magenta bar the line was going down, which was the yen. So that signaled an entry, but it wasn't elected off the 30 minute. You know, trading's all about risk. It's all about getting into the hunter mentality, and you've got to be patient, and you've got to sit there. The euro, US dollar will be the next one. And you can see that we have a little up move that's come in here. Has that been elected by Hawkeye? Well, you can see that the 30 minutes elected it. And I also have green volume that's come in on the 60 minutes. So that's been elected, providing that the fat man agrees. And the fat man does agree. The brown line is going down, which is the, which is the pound. And the green line is going up, which is the euro. So that has been elected. But this is on, um, and I know that you guys all like fast time frames, so let me just do um, something a little bit faster here. Um, this is the 5, 10, and 20 minute. And again, let me just pull up the Euro USD. So that little move that we saw on the 15 minute, again, you can see the accumulating volume coming in here. On the, uh, on, on the five minute, pushing it up. We paint the scion dot, we say, hey, there it is, go for it. Is it elected? Yes, we've got it over here. Yes, we've got it down here. Uh, we've got neutral volume, and then it goes to a dark color here. So everything comes in on this one, and it is elected, and it's taken up. Where do you come out? Again, we put our ATR levels on, and we are looking for an ATR run to the upside. Again, if you're just profit targeting, you're trying to take 50% off at two, the remaining 50% off at four. If you're trend running it, you're waiting to take closes above and below ATRs. I won't go into that technique. We teach that in class. But 
suffice to say that uh, had you taken that, it would have taken you up to, uh, that would have been, you would have come out with a 14 pip profit on that one. Nothing to uh, write home about. But had you taken it on this one, it's looking a lot better. Um, and you can use the ads again on this one. Let me just turn the ads off. Um, and again, you probably can't see that. So we've come up now to our three level. Something rather important has happened at our three level for us. And that is that we've got that yellow dot there. So we're really just looking to take profit as it touches this three level. I call it the sunshine level. That's why it's got a, it's a yellow and it's come up to the yellow. It's put the pivot high in there. And that's taken you up uh, to, uh, uh, yeah, that's, that's the same pip, pip run, is it? 17, uh, so 6 to 21, yeah. So that's on the fast time frames, but as I keep trying to tell everybody, the the money's on the, the slower time frames. And when you get to the slower time frames, you can really start making money. And somebody asked to see the pound yen. Let's have a look at that. Um, and it blow that one up. And again, on the live edge of the market we would be looking, there was the short coming in. Is that accepted? No, that isn't accepted. Why? Because the pound, which is the brown line, is going down here, and the yen is going down. So that's not elected. But when we get here, you can see that the pound has gone to oversold territory down here. It's now rising. And the yen, the magenta line here, is declining. We've got a low risk entry, and that's that would have been elected and that would have been taking us from an entry point here of 16754 up to 170 so you know that's uh that's 300 odd pips virtually up there or 200 say 260 odd pips on that move and you can see the accumulating volume coming in at the bottom of this trend run down here's the trend run Here's the volume on the price. Look, down here, it goes white, white, back here, telling us no demand, no demand, no demand. Then we've got buying, 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 no demand, pushed out on, on buying volume and taking it up. Now you're getting some distribution taking place up here. You can see that there's some red volume, no demand, red volume, a bit of buying, a bit of selling, all topping formations which you would expect because you've got these pivot highs in here, again, which we teach in class. So very important to have that amount of, uh, of information and the volume bringing it up. Randy, any questions coming in or any markets to look at? I've got 15 the, uh, minutes. The E-minis e have been e asked for quite a bit. OK. Well, let me just show you. Um, first of all, I show you time on the E-mini. Uh, here is the E-mini uh, time. This uh, blue line I have here shows the start of the day. And you can see coming into the start of the day before the market opened, uh, we had accumulating volume going on on the 10 minutes and no demand. Then the market opened up. It was tested. The market makers tested, tested it. You can see that there was selling volume. Market came down. Hawkeye trend did not agree. It was just showing you that that was testing volume. And then the market starts to go up, and we paint this gray dot, which is our first entry of the day, which came in at, uh, at uh, uh, 22, um, uh, uh, 10 in the morning. No, 22.11 in the morning, Eastern time. And that pushed it up. But what we do specialize in is tick volume. By the way, this indicator over here is telling me all the advancing declining issues in the, in the stock market, the New York, NASDAQ, um, and the Amex. It's telling us whether there's more buying or selling of, the, uh, of uh, individual stocks. But what we do specialize in is tick volume. And we run a specific room. We've got an ex-pit trader. Sean Walters, who runs a, a, a room. If you go to hawkeyetraders.com, you'll find him on there. Um, and he runs a trading room specifically on, on the S&P every day uh, for the whole session. And um, 
does exceptionally well. But you can see again here, here's the start of the market. There was that test that came in. If you're tick trading, you could take that. And each day what we do, this indicator here, tells us the tick speed. It just seemed crazy to me that every day you would use the same speed day in, day out, and not change your tick speed. Um, just like a cyclist with a hill. So every day we change. So I now know tomorrow my slow time frame goes from today 4920 to 5776 for a tick. My middle time frame goes. And then this tells me all during the day, this is the gear changer, tells me um, what charts to look at. So when it's blue, I'm looking over here and I'm trading that in harmony with these two. When it's yellow, I'm looking at this time frame. This is my yellow time frame with my slow time frame. When it's dark, orange, I just trade this time frame by itself. So I'm breathing in and out with the market. That has to make sense, doesn't it? So that's how the E-mini works. This is the tick volume on the E-mini. And this is a world's first. I haven't come across anybody else who's, who's done it. I know only one other company that's tried to do it, and I don't think too successfully. But this is a world first. It took me five years and three programmers to come up with this, um, and it is very, very uh, powerful and very unique. It can be used on Forex. We have ticks on Forex as well. Um, uh, um, if I can just bring that up. And you can run it on stocks intraday, whatever, whatever you like. Um, so here's the tick feeder. So now these the tick charts as opposed to the uh, time charts that I showed you. And if I just come into uh, tick main, let's go and put up uh, the, um, the, the euro. So this tells me each day what tick speeds to trade. trade. I'm not far off on here, so let me just, because I'm running out of time and I want to get this offer to you, you can just see that these are much smoother charts to trade than time charts, and they give you far greater results. So let me just now go back to uh, my closing thoughts. You know, volume and price is terribly important, and what I'm offering you is the accumulation of 20 years of research. I've spent thousands and thousands and thousands of hours on this. Um, dark alleys, reading, reading, reading. And I honestly believe that this is the finest volume algorithm out there. It's a sophisticated way of trading. Why? Because it shows you the internals of the market. It shows you accumulation, price movement, and distribution. It sets up trades very clearly. You know, our, our indicators work with you and show you the setups. And that is volume price analysis. It shows you how to perceive charts, how to place your trades, the profits you make, how to protect your positions because you can breathe your stops in and out with volume. So if you're long and you're seeing red volume coming in, tighten your stops up. After that period moves on and you can see that uh, buying volume comes in, you can breathe your stops back out again. We teach that in class. We've got a webinar special for you on the Hawkeye volume indicator. It has a value of $360 available in TradeStation, Ninja, and MT4. As I said, eSignal is coming very, very soon, and also multi-charts. I'm doing a private group mentoring session. So if you buy this today on March the 1st at 8 a.m. Eastern time, I'm going to do two hours and show you how to use the volume indicator with no other Hawkeye indicators for the first hour. So I'm going to give you a no BS session where I'm just showing you the six ways a market moves, trend, trend pause, congestion entrance, congestion, congestion exit, trend reversal, with the volume indicator, and I will be leaving something very valuable with you, I can assure you. I charge 500 bucks an hour for my own private mentoring, so that's a value of $1,000. So altogether, it's 1360 But if you sign up today, and I hate sounding like a hard salesman, but I'm trying to encourage you, we're doing it for 97 bucks. you know, which is dinner for two at Longhorns. 
uh, steakhouse with a good bottle of wine. If you click on the link, and the link has been posted in the room, come and join us. Come and join us on March the 1st. It's $97. There's no charge for upgrades in the future. You have access into the Hawkeye area. You become a Hawkeye user. You receive the newsletters. You can come into the trading rooms on Thursday and see us working. So all of this for $97. And join the Hawkeye family. Learn volume. It'll be a great tool in whatever arsenal you have. This is my own private trading system, which has morphed out there. We've got many, many hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of users and many testimonials. Um, and if any of you are interested, I am in the States at the moment. And on March the 9th and 10th, I'm doing a two-day seminar down in West Palm Beach in Florida. Uh, we've got a good show. And uh, Randy will be there. I will be there. Sean Walters, the pit trader, will be there on the Saturday and the Sunday. I got a guy coming from Lin London who's going to show the most amazing money management system on how to really generate profits. Um, and that's coming up. So Hawkeye is a one-stop company. If you go onto our website, uh, we do Hawkeye Mindset, where we will teach you uh, the, the mental fortitudes that you need. That's coming within the next three weeks. We've got the indicators, the edge of volume. We've got the education in our trading rooms, and we've got the money management. So please join us, and it'll be lovely to see you there. And thank you all very much for your time. And Morgan, thank you being, for being so gracious, uh, and Jeanette uh, for inviting Hawkeye to Traders Pub today. Thank you all. All right, great. Thank you, Nigel. We appreciate you uh, appreciate you being here. And um, again, guys, do you have any questions for Nigel or for Randy? I'm still here. Mike had a question about which indicator, the volume indicator, is it that one shows the cyan dots, and that was the what we call the roadkill indicator. But that is, that is that is trend. Go ahead, right? Yeah, the the roadkill uh, shows you the volume of double time frames and the volume setups. That is not the volume indicator. The volume indicator. Let me make perfectly clear so that you understand what the volume indicator is. It is this indicator here. Let me just expand this. It is this indicator here. That is the Hawkeye volume indicator. And that shows you off the price here, for example, on the on the euro USD. Right here, it's being sold. Hawkeye trend goes goes neutral. That is the indicator. This indicator by Roadkill that is part of the general Hawkeye traders package and is not ninety-seven dollars. But this indicator is what we are offering, plus my two-hour mentoring session, plus access to Hawkeye. And here you can see the accumulation coming in down the bottom of this trend run. Here's the buying volume coming in. And that's why if you were using a moving average or anything else, they're lagged. This is the leading indicator coming in. And there's a very, very good illustration of the power of volume showing you that this market, this downtrend has finished. Buying is coming in. Boom. There's the price move. There it is going up. But you don't need these other indicators to understand Hawkeye. I will give you a technique so that uh, uh, we try to be, well, not try to be, we are 100% ethical. I will give you an indicator that you can use if you don't want any of the Hawkeye indicators in, in that uh, presentation on, on March the 1st. I obviously think you're crazy if you don't get Hawkeye, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to show you for the first hour how to use the volume with Hawkeye, uh, with the, so, sorry, how to use the Hawkeye volume indicator with the six ways of market moves. I'm going to teach you that, and then I'm going to start layering on the other indicator, the Hawkeye trend indicator, etc., and tell you more about Hawkeye and do a Q&A session. Can you show the volume that shows the height of the volume instead of yeah. just a truncated? Mm -hmm. It also comes with the volume radar and the volume paint bar. Those are three different indicators. And it also includes the 
Hawkeye pivots and the Hawkeye wide bar that he shows on his screen as well. The pivots are these uh, yellow dots. I'll take you through those. The wide bar is the magenta. 80% of time, price wants to come back with inside a magenta bar as it did here, it didn't there, it did here, it did here, it didn't there, it did here. So that comes up. Um, and let me just go and show you what you want to see on price. It's probably easier. There it is there, for example. And there it is in height form that you can see. And the paint bar just takes the uh, the Hawkeye volume and places it on the actual price. You get that included as well. Let me just put that up. Hawkeye volume paint bar. I don't uh, use it only because I find it clutters my screen, but I know a lot of Hawkeye users love it. So there it is on each bar. So you can see bar by bar what this is doing down the bottom here. It's exact replica of this down here. So you get that, you get the pivots, you get the wide bar, and you get the volume algorithm, and you get me for two hours. And then you join the Hawkeye family and you get access into certain areas of our website and our trading rooms. Any other pressing questions, Randy? We're up to our time limit. How much CPU uh, does the indicators use? I have no idea. But I can tell you, I'm running this on a uh, on, on a VIO, uh, on a uh, on a Sony VIO, and it's just fine. And in TradeStation, you can turn on your CPU. So I'm a trader. I'm not a computer guy. I, I struggle with Word. Um, but I have no difficulty. This is just a, a um, Sony VIO that I travel around the world with. And it works absolutely fine for me. And you can see that I've got about 20 workspaces open down here as well. So I have no problems. Well, we've run up to our time. So again, thank you for your time. I hope I've uh, intrigued you by starting your journey on volume and coming to join us. And again, Morgan, thank you. I hope to be able to join you again shortly. And for you people who do decide to buy, and as I say, it's about the price of a long taking your wife out or girlfriend or whatever to uh, the Longhorn Steakhouse with a decent bottle of wine to uh, get this indicator. Come and join us. Thank you all very much. All right, great. Thank you, Nigel. We appreciate you uh, appreciate you being here and.